Let's take a look at Microsoft Outlook's out of office feature. When I was thinking about putting a video out on this topic, I almost dismissed it because I thought, what really is there to show? And my guess is the reason I thought that is because the way I used it is probably the way most people use it. And the way I use it isn't very interesting. But then I started digging into it and I discovered there's way more to this feature than I ever realized. So if you stick with me on this, I think you'll discover some really neat features. To begin with, if you're not familiar with what the out of office feature does, it automatically sends emails to somebody when you don't have contact with your email for an extended period of time, like on a vacation. So you want to make sure people don't think you're ignoring them. So you send them a little message that says, hey, I got your email. I'm on vacation. When I get back, I'll get in touch with you. So to set this up, we go up to file and in the backstage, we'll go down here to automatic replies. Now, here is how I've used it for years, and I'm guessing the way you've used it. Its default position is to be off for obvious reasons, but you can say, hey, let's go ahead and send automatic replies. For me, I usually remember this feature about three days into my vacation when it's already too late to be effective. So before you need to use it, it's probably best to go in here and set this up and put it on some sort of scheduled trigger. So in this case, I might want to say, hey, we're going to go ahead and kick this off on the 29th of December at 8 a.m. And we'll have it automatically turn off when we return, say on the 5th of January, 2026 at 8 a.m. This scheduling feature is nice because you can do it when there's no pressure when you're trying to get out and it can just automatically kick in. Plus, the fact that it automatically turns off mitigates the risk that you'll forget to turn it off and keep sending out these automatic replies even when you've returned. Next, we have the option to tailor the message so it can be different for people who are emailing you from within your organization versus people who are emailing you from outside of your organization. So for the inside my organization, I may want to put something rather specific so that different email senders can get different instructions depending on what they're contacting me for. But for an external email, which could be something like a junk mail that slips through the system, We'll go over here to outside my organization and add something more generic. So people inside the organization get something very detailed. People outside the organization get something generic. Plus, if it's going from outside the organization, if you don't want this to go out to every single person that sends you something like a vendor, maybe this will only go out to people who are in your contact database. And that way, unsolicited email won't even receive this. But if you wish to cover all of your possible incoming email, then you can just set it to anyone outside my organization. This is where everybody seems to stop their investigation of the automatic replies capabilities. You do have the ability to dress this response up with fonts and colors. I could take these three lines and turn them into a bullet list. We can use typical word processing style formatting like bold, italic, underline, color, font style, font size, and draw attention to keywords within the response. I wouldn't suggest going nuts with this feature. Here are just some examples. But it does help draw the viewer's attention to certain keywords. Now we get into the really interesting aspects of automatic replies. In the lower left corner, there's a button that says rules. Now this is different than Outlook rules if you're used to those. The first thing we'll do is we'll click add rule. As you can see here, the rule can apply to a very specific from or a specific sent to, or it could be just to messages directly sent to me or in cases where I'm CC'd. You could look for specific keywords in the subject or in the body of the message. If one of those conditions is met, like if it's somebody I don't want to hear from, I could just delete that email. Now what makes this different from a normal Outlook rule is a normal Outlook rule will run all the time. Whether you're on vacation or not, this delete rule will only be applied when the out of office is in play. So it will not delete messages based on any of these criteria once the service is deactivated. You might want to move a message to a specific folder or copy it to a folder. And here's what I think one of the best features is, if somebody's going to be doing your job for you while you're gone, you could automatically forward those emails to that person. And then you can decide whether to just forward it as a standard forward, leave the message as is, or have this be an attachment to a new message. You could reply to this event with a specific template. And if you've never used templates before in Outlook, check out the link in the video description or the thing in the corner up there if it pops up to see my video on Outlook templates. And of course, all of these things can be used in combination. You could reply with a template, you could forward it to an individual, you could move it to a folder. And if there was the possibility that this rule might conflict with a subsequent rule, you could halt the further processing of subsequent rules. Now, there are more things that can trigger a rule than what you see here at the top, like who it's from or what the subject is. If we go to advanced, it can be based on the size of an email. Is it at least X number of kilobytes in size or at most X number of kilobytes in size? 
This rule could only apply to a specific time frame within the overall usage time of the automatic replies. So imagine having automatic replies on for a month and having different responses go out every single week. The trigger could be based on importance or sensitivity. Maybe it's emails that only have attachments. And as stated a moment ago, these options can be used in combination. So the next time you're going on vacation and you want to set up an automatic reply, take a moment to reflect on all of the different ways you can use this feature and how different people or different situations that email you while you're gone can be handled different ways. If you're checking your email through the web, you can utilize some of the automatic reply feature by going up to File, then Settings, and then under the Account Main option, Automatic Replies as the sub-option. Here you can turn the automatic replies on, you can schedule them for activation and deactivation, and you can decide what replies go out for internal communication versus external communication, so very similar to the normal desktop Outlook. You even have a couple other options here that I don't remember seeing in the Outlook version. But beyond these features, you don't have access to all of those rules. So this would be good sort of an in-case-of-emergency break glass type of situation for turning it on, turning it off, or basic setup. But anything beyond that, you're going to have to use the desktop version of Outlook. So let me know your thoughts on this. Do you use automatic replies? Did you use it just with the minimal features like most people? Or have you sunk your teeth in the world of the rules and taken advantage of all these features? So let me know in the comments if you've discovered any really creative ways to use this. Thank you for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.